Welcome back everyone to episode 9. Today I want to talk about the most common question I get asked. Which camera should I purchase? My short answer is to purchase the most affordable camera possible. Let me explain. A camera is only a tool and how you use it is going to determine the value that it brings. Much like every other profession, the tool is only as good as the person using it. Yet when it comes to video and photography, it's a common misconception that you need the best equipment in order to get the most professional work possible. For the most part, this couldn't be further from the truth. Yes, better equipment can make a difference if you fundamentally understand what that difference is. When you become limited by the gear you are using and understand why you are limited, only then can you make a practical decision on what gear is best for you. At that point, you will no longer be asking the question, which camera should I purchase? Buying a new camera is like buying a new car. The minute that you start using it, it immediately starts to depreciate. As technology advances, so do the cameras, rapidly decreasing their value. So why do you want a camera and what is your most important need from that camera. If photography and video is just a hobby that you want to use to document your family's vacations, birthday parties, or any other event, you might consider sticking with your camera phone. Camera phones are only going to continue to improve. The quality is already very good for both video and photography and the best part is the phone is with you all the time. Always remember the best camera is the one that you have with you. Now if you are someone that is looking to become more professional in the field of video and photography, then it's really important to have a camera that allows you to control more of the technical features. You are going to need to learn your basic exposure triangle between ISO, shutter, and aperture. I'm not going to go into detail on that, but Peter McKinnon made a really great video explaining the importance of understanding these settings. You can find the link to that in the description below. So, which camera should you purchase? As a full disclaimer, I am not being sponsored to make this video by any affiliation in any way. However, I am a Sony user and I have my own biased opinion on camera manufacturers. I have used both Canon and Nikon extensively throughout my career and I can tell you that every camera manufacturer makes very high quality products. You really can't go wrong with any of them. Now for those of you that are looking for a camera that can really up your skill set to a more professional level, I would definitely recommend checking out the interchangeable lens cameras. You can sort by price, low to high. The second option on this list is the Sony a6000. I've personally used this camera and I can tell you that it will be hard to find a better camera for this price point. Now just remember that is for the camera body only. Directly above the price listing there is an option to add a 16 to 50 millimeter lens for only $100 more. This is a really great camera to begin learning both video and photography. One thing to always keep in mind is the sensor size of the camera. The Sony a6000 is an APS-C sensor size. This means that the camera sensor has a 1.5 times crop compared to a 35 millimeter full frame camera. This matters because because the lenses you purchase will either be 35mm full frame lenses or crop lenses. My Sony a7 III, which is a 35mm full frame sensored camera, has the same lens mount as the a6000. Both cameras take E-mount lenses. So in other words, lenses that fit on my Sony a7 III will also fit on the Sony a6000. However, if you have a cropped lens on the Sony a6000, it will not fit in the same way on an a7 III. While that lens will still mount on an a7 III, because it's cropped, you will see the inside barrel of that lens. This might sound confusing at first, but it's really important to understand this if you ever plan to upgrade from a crop sensor camera to a full frame camera. Planning ahead and buying full frame lenses will future proof you from having to sell old lenses and buy new ones when you upgrade to a full frame sensor camera. This is exactly why the first lens that I ever purchased was more expensive than the camera itself, and I still use it to this day. The lenses you purchase are almost more important than the camera because they do not depreciate in value in the same way. You can hold your lenses for a long time and be able to sell them later on. I hope this all makes sense and has helped you understand how to make better decisions when purchasing your first camera. Learn everything you can about that camera. By doing that, you will learn the features of the camera that you need most and you will no longer have to ask the question, which camera should I purchase? Because you will already know at that point. Like everything else you do, don't get too overwhelmed in the beginning. Keep pushing forward and keep learning. Once you finally get over that hump of learning the camera's features and the exposure triangle, 
you can really dive into the creative process. Eventually, using a camera is like playing an instrument. You don't have to think about the settings you are using, you just become more instinctive. Check out the description below if you'd like to see my gear list, but please don't let it persuade you from making your own decisions on what gear is right for you. It's really important to figure out what is best based on your needs. Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already yet. Thank you for watching and see you next time.